Hi everyone, my name is Adrian Schilling and I'm here with Next Action Associates to discuss the matter of distractions at your workplace. It's, it's a thing currently with my clients. I, I have same conversations coming up over and over and over again and it's they all start pretty much the same. It's like with all that is going on around us, with all the turmoil that is going on and the crisis and the, the inflation and the insecurity, I, I get or I think that people just are looking for a grander sense of meaning in whatever they're doing. And they're looking for this feeling coming home that they've been effective at something, that they've been meaningfully and appropriately engaged with their reality. And it's always a very interesting conversation, but it does start, start pretty similar, which is why is that for you? Like what is in the way? And what comes up is most of the time distractions. Distractions from what they planned to do. You know, they, they, they have these, some sort of system, they have their to-do list, they have a calendar, and they plan to do something with their day. They're not just mindless. <laughs> they, they are very thoughtful with what they want to do. But then the reality kicks in, and their reality is, as they describe it, is I have competing priorities. Like both things seem super important, super urgent. What should I do? Um, there is suddenly an important call that comes in and that interrupts something that was equally important, but just just needs to be attended to. There's just life as it happens, and for many, it's just they're surrendering to well, that is the reality in which we live. And when I hear that, I, I I'm remembered, and I I remind uh, I remind myself of. Well, that moment where I thought as well that that's just a reality and a bit of a discouragement. And, well, I was a student back then when I started my journey in that field of productivity. But I remember that day where I was sick as well of all that interruption and distractions. And I promised myself I wanted to have a day worth of effective studying. And I used all the tips and tricks in the book you could find to make sure that my distractions are close to nil, to zero. I closed down all the apps I didn't need to use. I closed the doors. I closed, I shut off my phone. I told my friends not to disturb me. I put blockers on my web browser to make sure that I wouldn't land on Facebook. I would shut myself from the Wi-Fi and just turn it on just for a research, purposefully researching something. I, I used, as I thought, everything. And I did manage to focus on something that mattered for me, but only for five minutes. What happened then is my brain started to wake up and suddenly be reminded of things that in that moment in time were completely useless. I like to call that friend that is in a different time zone I can't call right now. Or it reminds me to bring that trash out I just forgot an hour ago at home and that will have to sit one more week in my place. Nothing I can do right now about that. Too late. Completely useless. And so I thought that distractions can be, can be controlled by just shutting yourself off the reality, which simply was, wasn't true for me. That's when I started to look for resources and look for methodologies. And it brought me to GTD among other things, but it, it, I, stick, I stick with GTD because it works just so well for me personally. Because, well, look, 10 years from that experience I just ex explained to you, like if you fast forward 10 years, the number of distractions in my reality have exploded. Why? Because back then I was responsible for me, myself, and I. Today, I have a wife, I have kids, uh, I work in different countries across Europe, I travel a lot, so there is much more going on. So just mathematically speaking, the number of distractions have increased. But quite simultaneously as well, fast forward 10 years from me as being a student, what I see is most of the time I'm meaningfully engaged. Quite seldom, I would say, I'm distracted. I'm, I'm still distracted, right? Nobody's perfect. But the number, the sheer number of this, I would call distractions, have plummeted. And why is that? Because I learned one thing, and one thing that is the key of this video. What I thought was first get the, get the focus time, right? Protect the focus time and then get everything under control in that time was wrong. I had it upside down. 
I needed to first get everything under control so that I could then focus on the right things. And that, that shift made for a huge difference. And that I'd like to underline, it's about controlling everything. Now, when we say control here, it's not about controlling the kids so that they make exactly what you want them to do, right? Um, that's being a control freak, and I'm, I'm guilty of it. Um, it's not about controlling the pandemic, right? It's out of our control. Now, it's about that feeling of, hey, I'm controlling my email inbox. I'm controlling that meeting that is in front of me. I feel when I'm driving my car that everything is under control. It's that what we're talking about. As long as you don't have that feeling for everything you said yes to in your life, your brain won't stop reminding you all the time of the things you said you would, could, should want to do. Does that make sense? Now, I remember as well, the first time I heard, shut yourself off and close down the notifications. And I remember doing that and feeling horrible for, I think, 20 minutes is the time I managed to not look at my phone. Why? Again, because everything was not under control. The day I understood that once everything is under control, I can focus, that was the, the, the day everything changed in my life. I want you to do something. Just don't, don't believe me because I say so. Just try it out for yourself. Pull out a piece of paper and write out your to-do list as you would normally do. Everything that is important and urgent for today, and maybe as well everything that is urgent and important for the week. I want you to then take a second piece of paper and for 10 minutes write out everything that is on your mind that might be less important, less urgent, but they're still lingering somewhere, right? Think of that, I don't know, maintenance for your car that needs to happen in the next six months. Think of your taxes that you need to do in the next four to five months. Nothing urgent now. Maybe there's something that pops through your mind. Your tooth maybe needs a checkup. Your body needs a checkup. Is there maybe plans you have for the holidays already that and it has your attention. I don't know what it is, just write out everything that is important, not important, urgent, not urgent, big, small, whatever that is, private and professional. Don't organize, just write out everything, right? Just write bullet points, write as fast as you can, even if you've just written it down as well on your to-do list. It's important for this exercise because once you're done, and if you did really do the exercise, then you should have a list which has a couple of dozens of things, a dozen at least, if not a couple of dozens, right, on that list, which is more than you should probably have on your left. And then I want you to notice, with the question in mind, what is exactly hindering me to focus on what matters most to me? Have that question in your mind, and then look at both lists. And you'll often see that what hinders you to focus on what is important and what, what is urgent and what matters most to you, that is on the left, is most of the time that which is on the right. If you get that, if you understand, like it took me a while just to get that, that GTD is not about having lists, but it's about a way to control the things I can actually control so that my mind can then focus on whatever I choose to, right? That changes your life. And it's, I'm using a hyperbole here. I'm saying big words like change your life, but it's true, it did change my life profoundly. If something I've just said rings on some level with you, right? If there is some connection here I'm having with you, I'm trying to connect. If that happens, then you might benefit from a little bit of more control. Wherever you are, right? GTD meets you exactly where you are. And if, if so, then there are five steps. Probably you've heard a couple of times. There are multiple videos in here you can find on our channel. The first step is capture it outside of your head. You already done that. Now you can start clarifying each point. What is it? Do you want to do something about it? If yes, what? If no, what will you do with it? Then put reminders, that's step three, of what you just said you would do. Put reminders where you know you'll find them and you can review them. Finally, you review that organizing system on a regular basis and you then can decide upon your review, you can then decide What's next? And the magic is then that your brain stops reminding you, once you trust that system, about everything that you're not doing in that moment. We really hope that helps and that you can find a little bit of solace in this video. Please write out any questions you might have um, under the chat here, and I look forward to hearing from you. 
拜。